How's it going, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing good. So recently, my Forester did hit the 10,000 mile mark ever since I got the car. So that's really exciting. And uh, honestly, it's really just been a blast. Now, I did pick up the vehicle at the end of May, beginning of June. So it's been about six months already. And yeah, I've already put on 10,000 miles on a car, mainly from road tripping, just because the vehicle is such a blast to own. But in celebration of the 10,000 mark, I wanted to create a list for you guys about all the maintenance issues that I have had ever since I had the car. Now before I begin, I do want to point out that this is not a list of issues that you may encounter if you want to pick up a Forester. I have a video for that already somewhere over here. Instead, this video is going to focus a bit more about the issues that I personally have with my Forester. With all that being said, let's go ahead and get started with that list. Now I did pick up my 2007 Subaru Forester XT with 147,000 miles. Now out the door, that was 6,500 for me. So hopefully that 6,500 will provide a baseline for you all if you guys do wanna pick up a Subaru Forester XT. So let's go ahead and get started with all the known issues that I've had to pay out of my own pocket. Now the first item on that list will be the AC clutch issue, which costed me about 10 bucks to fix. And to be honest, I did not catch this issue until a few days after I got the car when I realized that the AC would stop working after about 10 minutes and start blowing the warm air. At first, I did switch out the cat and air filter and unfortunately, that did not help at all. So I did more research and I did find that AC clutch issues were very common on Subaru Forester models. What I did instead was I took out the AC clutch and took out one of the shims that was located behind AC clutch. I'll leave more information down in the description below, but ever since that fixed, AC has been working completely fine. Now, number two on this list will be the Wenga's wind noise issue that I already made a video about, which I will list up here. That issue itself took only 10 bucks to fix but it's very common in the Forester and Outback models so if you do plan on picking up a Forester just make sure you look more into this. Now number three on this list is going to be the charcoal canister evap leak that is very very common on older Subaru Foresters and I'm just gonna be honest with you guys the day I picked up the vehicle and was driving home we were about 50 miles out when the check engine light came on and as you guys probably know I that was very stressful that was very unfortunate and obviously I was very upset at the dealership with this very very shady practice but fortunately it was only a check engine light for the evap system so for this issue I spent several days looking to see if I could find where the evap system was leaking and eventually it resulted back to the charcoal canister leaking which was unfortunate because charcoal canisters do cost about three four hundred bucks just to replace so after doing a bit more research and coming to a conclusion I was able to find out that my county does not do emissions testing that means that I don't necessarily need evap system so what I did instead was I got a hundred fifty dollar Tetrix cable system to just completely delete that check engine light code from my engine and so far it's been great uh, no issues at all with the check engine light coming back on and it's definitely a lot cheaper than that three four hundred dollar charcoal canister now number four on this list would be about two three months into my ownership of the car and suddenly check engine lights came on for a secondary air pump failure and for this specifically the valves for the secondary air pumps were being seized which were thrown off check engine light codes so what I did instead was I ordered some $30 block off plates for this specific mod and for this specific issue I just removed all the hoses and then used the $30 block off plates and blocked off where the valves used to go and then used the Traxx cable that I already had to delete all the check engine lights associated with the secondary air pump delete. Now moving to number five and the last item on this list will be replacing the timing belt kit for the Forester. After reviewing the Carfax, I was not able to locate any confirmation or receipt of the timing belt job being done on the Forester already. So after about a month of ownership, I decided to go ahead and get the timing belt kit replaced just in case it wasn't a risk I was willing to take. And so this maintenance came out to be the most expensive issue that I've done so far for the Forester and the kit itself came to be about $250 for the Eisen timing belt kit including the wire pump and when it comes to installing this kit it's relatively simple if you are mechanically inclined or have any experience with that it's pretty simple you wouldn't really need to get anybody else to do 
it. But if you're not familiar with using a wrench, it would definitely cost you a bit more, but this is something that you definitely do not want to overlook. And so those five items were the main issues that I've had to fix on my Forrester XTs. And you'll probably agree that the window gusset fix isn't really an issue, but at the end of the day, I just want to provide a transparent list for you guys about all the issues that I've had to do for my Forrester. And for my calculations, the total of all those maintenance costs came up to be about $450. Now with that out of the way, I'm gonna quickly provide all the other maintenance costs I've done to the car so far, including regular maintenance. And it's going to be new tires, $500. Coolant, $50. Oil changes, $100. Transmission oil flush, $100. New brakes, $100. New spark plugs, $80. Adding all of that up, and the total is $1,340 that I've spent so far in maintaining my Forester. And that does conclude this video. Hopefully this list does provide a bit more transparency about my own personal experience with my Forester and what I had to do to fix it. And before I end, if you guys did find this video helpful or have any questions, feel free to like and comment down below. And as always, if you guys wanna see what happens next to XT, the 86, 986, the Z, the 50, or the Macan, be sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.